Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And with me, as always, the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California. Pastor Joe Schimmel, how are we doing today? Praising God, bro. Yeah, I heard you, actually, during the bit of the injury. <laughs> the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also with Amen. us, as always, is the show's producer, Tony Palacio. How are you doing today, bro? I am extremely blessed. Well, praise God. We are so excited, guys, because... Guess what? You guys are hearing us, whether you're on Podbean or YouTube or Facebook. Uh, you could be on Spotify. They're, they're, I mean, we're, we're everywhere online. But guess what? You can also hear us Monday through Friday on the Good Fight Radio Network, which you can actually download the app. We're going to launch this together. We want you guys involved this Friday, May 8th, 4 o'clock our time. So if you're in Texas... It's only 6. If you're in New York, it's about 7. But we would love to have you guys with us. We are so excited. And by the way, getting just getting that out, talking about you guys sharing the live stream. We're going to do two full shows. Tony's going to be doing it with us. Joe, myself, will be in the studio. We're actually doing a practice. Actually, we have already done a practice on Friday uh, run to make sure it's ready to go. And I've seen so many people sharing What's going on at Good Fight Radio Network? What's going on with the Good Fight Radio Show, the YouTube channel, Facebook post, sharing all this stuff. But one thing that was really cool is the last Wednesday message, I saw a ton of new people and people commenting, hey, this is the teaching or the church or the pastor I was telling you about. And then we're seeing new people on there all the time. And that's that's what I that blesses my heart to see that, that you guys are like, hey, I'm getting fed. I want to see other people get fed. Amen. Yeah, so Please, guys, continue to do that. Uh, we love having, being a part of our, our church family, whether distant or otherwise, especially during COVID. And it's been really, really exciting to get to know people online. And for the people we have met from meeting them online first, it's always immediately just fellowship. It's just hanging out. It, it's it's awesome. So we praise God for that. And speaking of COVID-19, we've had some uh, prophecies that were given to us that it was going to end uh, a number not of given times. to us that we gave, but yeah, <laughs> not from God to us. Not, but, uh, no, they weren't prophets. from God to anybody, actually, <laughs> yeah, not to these guys. Um, because when God does give a prophecy, it, it, it comes to pass. Absolutely. Um, and we were gonna, we've talked about Sean Bowles, so we were going to talk about that. I mean, they even had his prophecy on Fox News. Uh, so we were going to talk about that, but we've actually done a whole episode. And Tony, you can put the link at the bottom. Yep. For that episode, so that people can check that out if they want. Actually, we did multiple episodes on on Sean Bowles and false prophets, but we still want to talk about it because we have a viral prophecy. In fact, one of my my brother actually sent this to me. Like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> and I was like, that guy's not a Christian, and had to explain to him uh, what the word of faith is. You know, so even though Satan means things for evil, God will turn him for good. So I want you to hear this prophecy. That by the way, when you listen to it was given on the first week of April. All right, Tony, play it. COVID-19! COVID-19! I blow the wind of God on you. You You are destroyed forever. You are destroyed forever. And you will never be back. Well... Whoa! So, did it work? Uh he. I don't. He's not blowing the wind of God on anybody. He may be blowing more COVID on people, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, and this this was followed. By, that's false prophecy. Well, mm-hmm. definitely Still a false prophecy, day. and it's not his first one. He's been doing no, this for years. A, he's made it several. Did you mention that was Kenneth Copeland? Yes. Did I mention well, that was Kenneth Copeland? Not by name, but yeah. that's who it was. That's one of the leaders of the Word Faith Movement for nice decades catch, now, <laughs> and an arch heretic. I mean, he claimed that Jesus appeared to him. This is the same guy that said Jesus appeared to him. And told him not to be upset that people were upset that he was claiming to be God, you know, because he went around saying he's a God. And he's had Jesus supposedly say to him that, you know, hey, they persecuted me and I never even claimed to be God. I mean, that's like a double heresy. 
Ugh. And that's it's, it's interesting because that's what happens in uh, the occult, you know. Uh, they strip Jesus of his deity over and over again, and then they exalt themselves as gods. And it's interesting to see, and, and it, was, it shouldn't shock us because he's the same man who said that, you know, that the witches understand the spiritual laws, like, you know, better than the Christians, so they can use these spiritual laws to get things done. And he's talking about the word faith and speaking words, speaking things into existence and reality. So uh, he's basically a, an agent of Satan is what he is. Yeah, and uh, he was... I mean, he's had a, a little more publicity lately as well. I'm sure he didn't like too much, but uh, I remember he also was the one who said he, you know, he had to be a little higher in uh, the, yeah, the private jet. jets. Oh, you yeah. know, God will hear him better up there because he doesn't want to go into those tube of demons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the people that need to be witnessed to and the people that need the gospel. But nonetheless, yeah, that was a false prophecy. So one of the things we wanted to talk about, especially with COVID, and this is in, in, this is right in line with what's going on, uh, is when somebody makes a false prophecy like that, and without a doubt, his blowing of wind did nothing, as you said, except maybe pass COVID on to the minions that are around him, uh, you know, repeating after every word. Uh, sadly, it is a black eye to the body of Christ. Absolutely. This is, like, the, the website you just listened uh, to that clip from is a secular website, honestly mocking that this is what's going on. And what what's sad is that you go from this arena, which is craziness and lunacy, and then when someone says, hey, we need to pray for COVID-19 and, and, and that the Lord would do a work and that people would be saved and that this would end if it be the Lord's will. That's right. They and that, ju that just together. happened and totally got lumped together recently with uh, Megan McCain and Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Elizabeth Hasselbeck said, you know, that she was praying, you know, for everything to that this would go away and, and she was taking her proper precautions. And on a show, Megan McCain's on there and pretty much said she's so disgusted that she would just pray away the COVID-19 that she'll never go back on The View or whatever if she's on there. Not that that's a worthy show to go on regardless, <laughs> but you, you have someone there that also is pro-homosexual and um, all these sorts of things, and obviously that's the conservative voice on those kinds of shows. But you see how this can th this can overlap for some people, the non-believers, when Satan has blinded their eyes, that this is Christianity, that Kenneth Copeland and Sean Bowles and these guys making false prophecies, that this is the Christian faith, and that is nothing that we read about in the New Testament. In fact, this false prophet that we, we're going to talk about that and how, how do they make excuses because Scripture doesn't give them an excuse. Okay, they're going to make excuses. And Jeremiah Johnson was a teacher that was recently on a radio show. And I had commented something, and I'll read that comment back and f not back and forth because I didn't get an answer back. But I'll read that comment because he was on a radio show. And I believe this clip was uploaded not too long after he was on that radio show. And it seems like the guy whose show he was on had to respond to people saying, this guy's a false prophet. But he actually gives his excuse to why he can have false prophecies and to the glory of God, apparently. So here's Jeremiah Johnson. Years ago, I prophesied to a man in a meeting. I got his name. The Lord showed me a large business. He was be going to become a multi-millionaire. I mean, tremendous. I mean, it was probably like the greatest prosperity word bear I ever gave. I mean, I could have preached with the best of them. Just came on me. He called the office five days later and said, you're a false prophet. My company just went bankrupt. Now listen to what I've been teaching you today by the Word of God. I said, brother, I actually believe now after what you've told me that that was the Word of the Lord. I measure prophetic accuracy by how much warfare follows it. Okay, okay. All right. That's so now, ridiculous. Now, when I say a black eye to the body of Christ, the clip you just heard, and I'm not even going to have Tony leave the link um, because it's from an atheist, God-hating man who posted that. But this is exactly what happens. They go and they find these clips and they go, look how dumb the Christians are. Look how silly this is. This is what they believe. And then you have people that he's making it. I, I, I'm, a false, I'm not a false prophet. This guy said I'm a false prophet because... I prophesied to him, and the exact opposite took place. And yet people will say, oh, well, 
Now, the spiritual warfare happened right after I gave this prophecy. So that means it's true. It's accurate because it's inaccurate because Satan's coming after them. Um, and someone who, Jeremiah Johnson was on his radio show, said it's important that, that you can prophesy falsely without being a false prophet. And then he equates it to you can teach falsely without being a false teacher. As Paul wrote, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Okay, and I actually responded to him because I was so I was like that is just so off And I said is there a New Testament text that shows that we no longer hold prophets under the same scrutiny of Deuteronomy 1822 and we'll get to that in a little bit not advocating for the death penalty But how do we differ under the new covenant concerning our judgment of a false or true prophet? Compared to how those under the old covenant would have and I think that's a good question because you'd have to ask yourself that. Is there a difference that we are supposed to judge, not under the same judicial rendering that we then put them to death, but is there any place in the New Testament that you know of that we no longer listen to Deuteronomy 18.22 that if somebody fal pr falsely prophesies, they, false they, have pros bleep, they have prophesied presumptuously and they are not to be feared. Is there any difference here? Yeah, the only difference would be is uh, in in the church age. You know, we're not a theocracy under God's uh, rule as a nation, uh, the nation of Israel. We're in a, a Gentile nation, and we're not under the old covenant. We're under the new. Uh, so, uh, as far as stoning a prophet to death, that's you know not part of the new covenant teaching. Uh, but at the same time, we are called to mark out those who cause division, not according to sound doctrine. Uh, Romans chapter sixteen. We're told by Jesus, beware of false prophets, and you'll know them by their fruit. A fruit of an orange tree is its oranges. Uh, the fruit of a true prophet, at least some of the fruit, would be true prophecies, not false prophecies. And Jesus warned that if we, the blind follow the blind, they'll follow them to a ditch. And the scriptures warn that uh, false prophets are going to the blackest of darkness forever, and they're leading their followers there. So we're called to eschew them. We're called to uh, test everything, hold fast that which is good, test everything and be good Bereans by the scripture. So it's interesting he twists the scriptures to justify. So if, if there was a scripture that he could use, he would have used it. But he uses a scripture way out of context, which is what false prophets do. Uh, he took the scripture where Paul said in uh, chapter 13, around verse 8 or so, and following, Paul talks about, it's not about the gifts of spirit. And now, yeah. you know, uh, when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. So when he's talking about that which is in part being done away, he's talking about uh, the context of, partial knowledge that God gives us through prophetic utterance and the, the knowledge that he gives us through revelation will have full knowledge and that that full knowledge will subsume being that we'll see through a glass no longer darkly but we'll see face to face we'll have all the knowledge we'll know as we're known it says and right now we we, we we see in part and we prophesy in part so we get part of the picture that doesn't mean we prophesy under the inspiration of God part lies and part truth okay, that's not what he's talking about He's talking about God gives us, peels back, uh, unfolds for us through revelation knowledge, the word of God. He's given us his word. At times he can give us uh, an insight or an understanding uh, supernaturally. Uh, we can pray. Don't just, just don't move. Pray if you're going to consider moving yeah. your business and, and seek the Lord. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. He can speak to your heart. It doesn't become on par with scripture. But if God speaks to you and you say it's from the Lord, you better be careful, man. Because if you're starting to say, God told you something, I encourage our brothers and sisters in the audience, don't go around, God said this to me, and God said that to me, and God said this to me. Because if you just say that because you feel he may have said something to you, don't just say God spoke to me and said something to me in an absolute sense. You, you know, you might feel like God's leading you in a certain direction, then say you feel like God may be leading you in a certain direction. But I'd be careful with that because unless you've got a really good track record, you have to be very, very careful. So uh, he's using a scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, way out of context. We're not to stone prophets today that are false, but we're sure to, we're, 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 we're warned to expose them. We're warned to have nothing to do with them and so forth. So uh, so they'll take a scripture and say, oh yeah, they stoned him in the Old Testament, but it's different now. No, a lie is still a lie. And there's more danger now in regard to being led astray than there was in, in, in uh, the Old Testament times because we're dealing with what the Bible predicted in regard to uh apostasy so i think when you look at like second peter second peter i think is a go-to book when we're talking about the word faith movement and the prosperity movement mm. and false prophets and also the cheap grace movement the easy believism where you don't need to repent 
You don't need to, you know, uh, have Jesus as your Lord. You can reject his lordship and just accept salvation and just go on and do what thou wilt. Uh, Peter, man, he comes against, the same with Jude. And Jude and Second Peter are often considered twin epistles. Yeah. Uh, and, and it looks like Jude was actually inspired. He's going to write about our common salvation, verse 3, one chapter, right? But then uh, he wanted to encourage them to earnestly contend Thanks for the for faith. The faith and yeah. Then you look at some of the things he lays down. It seems like he was inspired by Second Peter. And the Lord used that to encourage him to get, continue to give that warning against those who are turning grace into In license. the license to sin, into sensuality, into materialism. And that's what the, the, the word faith teachers often do. In fact, let's look at a few verses in Second Peter, and let's talk about them. Second Peter chapter 2, this is after he talks about growing in godliness, growing in our spiritual walks, adding to our faith, you know, uh, you know, moral excellence, and to moral excellence, uh, you know, uh, knowledge, and the knowledge self-control, and seven uh, communicable attributes that are part of the divine nature, the Holy Spirit, that he empowers us to walk like him, not becoming divine, but being partakers of his Holy Spirit, you know. So it's interesting. Then he goes on to warn about these false prophets who don't encourage us to grow in, you know, moral excellence, who don't encourage us to press forward in uh, a surrender to the Lord. In Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, listen to what he says, and tell me this is not happening all over the place today, but there were also false prophets among the people. And by the way, this is a true prophecy Peter's giving, right? But just as there will be false teachers among you, even as there were false prophets among the people, just read Ezekiel. Just read Jeremiah. I mean, oh, they were yeah. false prophets constantly leading God's people astray. And they were they usually outnumbered by far those who were true men of God. But there were also false prophets among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among you, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, when Jude warns that, uh, you know, certain men have crept in unaware. So it's important that we get this because a lot of times you'll see people deal with false prophets and they'll deal with false teachers and they'll come across verses like this. They'll start talking about Jehovah's Witnesses, start talking about the Mormons. And certainly these verses can apply to them. And we have a lot to say about the cults and the, you know, the world religions, Islam and so forth. But this is talking about those who have crept in among us. Mm -hmm. There's not a bunch of JWs and Mormons sitting in our congregations seeking to deceive our people typically. They go to your door. They're understood to be outsiders typically. But these false teachers have crept in, as Jude said, unaware. Uh, people aren't aware that they're false teachers. They secretly introduce destructive heresies. So the heresies are destructive. They're not promoting godliness, holiness, uh, the tr a true understanding of God's grace, whereby we appreciate uh, the salvation that we have in Jesus and that appreciation and thanksgiving redounds to his glory in a life that's full of thanksgiving and seeks to live righteously. A grace of God that appears to all men, Paul says, teaches us to deny ungodliness. Well, these guys basically flaunt, you know, living for prosperity, living for self. He goes on to say they secretly induce destructive heresies. I like the King James here, damnable heresies, because many of these heresies will damn the soul, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them yeah, they were bought by the blood of Jesus, died for everyone, but they deny him. And and Jude mentions the same thing again because they're twin epistles, you know. Uh, they deny, the, you know, the Despotin, despot, yeah. Yeah, which is used of, despot, of yeah. God, right? Even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. So they bring these things in clandestinely. Uh, in other words, brothers and sisters, as you are listening to Christian radio, hopefully not Good Fight Radio, you know, and our new network, uh, let us know if anything false comes up because we can't be a radar over everything every teacher says. So we're depending on our audience to let us know when something may be off because we have several different teachers there. Great teachers, but who knows, you know, people can get off. But uh, we want people to be aware. And when you're listening to a lot of Christian radio, you listen to a lot of Christian TV, I mean, it's just filled with uh, false doctrines so, so often, uh, filled with false teachings. And a lot of Christians, because they mix the error like decon, rat poisoning, it's only like one-tenth of one percent poison. You know, the rest is food. And that's what you got to be careful about, that small percentage. So they secretly bring in these lies. And Satan counterfeits him as an angel, himself as an angel of light. It says, no wonder his ministers transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Then look at verse 2. I think this is huge. It says, many, many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the truth the way of truth. Who's the way of truth? Jesus. They'll bring the way of truth into disrepute. I mean, 
Chad, you mentioned, you know, yeah. this is your brother who you're trying to encourage to follow Jesus, right? Yeah. He goes to secular site, and all of a sudden he sees Jesus being given a black eye. And this is exactly, these these prophecies in Second Peter, guys, open the word of God and let God prophesy to yeah, you. Yeah, amen. You know? amen. Let God speak to you, you know? Don't chase any new thing, you know? So they'll secretly introduce these lies. Many will follow their depraved conduct. And I think this is very important. A big church or a successful ministry does not guarantee that it's of God. You know, that's why we got to, you know, the pragmatism and, oh, it must be blessed of God. You know? Oh, yeah. Whenever I get those emails, <laughs> I'm always like, come on. Yeah, it's you know? frequent, frequent. It's uh, so sad. Yeah, amen. And in their greed, uh, they'll, uh, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. So they make stories up. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagan, these are the granddaddies, the fathers of the word faith movement, the prosperity heresy. Uh, Kenneth Hagin was considered the granddaddy of it. And he actually made a bunch of stories up where Jesus appeared to him. And Jesus gave him these teachings secretly. And then it so happens that D.R. McConnell, who was in his master's thesis for uh, his, dis his dissertation for Oral Roberts University, which is very off in a lot of areas, right? Word faithy and so forth. He actually sh goes through column after column after column after column, showing where... Hagen claimed to get these revelations from Jesus when Jesus appeared to him, but showing the revelations he got were taken from E.W. Kenyon, another heretic, and that he just lifted them from his pages. So these guys copy each other. Uh, in Jeremiah, Ezekiel, in one of those books, it talks about how they repeat each other's lies, and they just say them over and over again. Mm. And he was making stories up. And in, the, in their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. They're greedy. I mean, look at Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. Why do you need another jet? Well, so I don't have to be around people that do drugs on planes, you know? And so I could be so high in the atmosphere where I can't be affected by demons. I'm not kidding. Yeah. This, this is just ridiculous. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Ooh. And when it says many, many will follow their depraved conduct, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many, there that word many is again. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name, drive out demons. In your name, perform many miracles. Then I will tell them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. See, they're not doing the will of the Father. They're doing their own will. And many of these, there'll be many of these false prophets. Now, many false prophets cannot exist unless they have many followers. And that's exactly what Paul said would happen in the last days. Paul says, Paul gives another prophecy by the Holy Spirit. True prophets again, because we're in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, preach the word, be prepared in season, out of season, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. The time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, or as I think the King James says, to tickle their ears, they'll gather around themselves a great number of teachers. Do you catch that? They'll gather around themselves a great number of teachers. First is to, to, to satisfy their own lusts, is, uh, to suit their own desires. Then he goes on to say, to say what their itching ears want to hear. There's, there are millions of people out there who have itching ears who want to hear that God wants them to be rich in this world, that God wants them to, I mean, that guy prophesied, and we just heard him, you know, make an excuse for it. You know, your business is going to be this multi-million dollar business. The guy called back, calls back five years, days later, you're a false prophet. My business just went into bankruptcy. I mean, an exclamation point that you are a false prophet, dude. You need to repent on your face before God. You need to fear and tremble and say, God, have mercy on me. Don't take my life before I can get right with you. So I don't end up in the lake of fire. But instead, what does he do? He searches for an escape hatch to where he can remain a false teacher and continue to give false prophecies because he'd rather have people relish in the fact that he, he is a prophet than repent and show humility before God and with a broken heart, say, man, I am so sorry I said that to you. I can't believe I said that. It's wrong. It was evil. I, I repent of it, and I'm not a prophet. I will never prophesy again. Could Which, you imagine that, though? I mean, from a pastoral position that you, imagine you gave guidance like that. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> the false prophecy aside, you gave guidance like that, and this guy comes to you with this broken heart, and you're like, oh, yeah, that false prophecy I gave, you know what? That just proves that it was really right because it was wrong, and now the devil's coming after my false prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's because ridiculous. you experienced warfare afterwards, it was it was correct. I mean, it was just a false prophecy. Uh, you have some of these guys prophesy about, you know, we went through this in another show where someone was prophesying about someone's kid will get well and not die of a disease, and oh. they still died. And you talk about how heartbreaking that would be, and, and then that person not only loses their child, but this teacher who claims to represent God, and they 
probably put some kind of stock in. Then they start to wonder, where's the Lord? And is the Lord real? And and this this is why these guys are in such trouble. In Matthew 24, 9, when Jesus talks about the apostasy, he says that at that time many will fall away and betray and hate mm-hmm. one another. Why? Verse 11, and many false prophets will arise and mislead many. One reason is verse 9, though you'll be hated, they'll be persecuted, be killed. The other reason is there'll be false prophets seeking to lead people astray. Jesus said, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. you. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Uh, when we speak the truth, we're going to have some enemies. Uh, we have, I hear, I hear at Blessed Hope and Good <laughs> Fight, we have a lot of enemies. You know, those who make false prophecies and don't repent of them become our enemies. They hate what we say. You know, the true prophets. I mean, Isaiah was sawn in two, guys. You know, Zechariah was stoned to death. Jesus was mm-hmm. crucified. Jesus said this to his apostles, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too. The servant's not greater than master. And look how many of the apostles died. So we have to count the cost and, and recognize that the way of the truth is being in disrepute. And praise God, Chad, because when your brother contacted you about that, if you were following this guy or into these false teachers, you would have made excuses and he would have been so confused. He'd think you're off Christianity. He's jacked, it's messed up. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Praise God, you were able to expose the work of darkness and say, hey, don't, don't let Jesus get a black eye from this. Yeah, this yeah. is not from Jesus. You know, this is this is this is uh, false teaching, and Jesus is still the truth. You know, it's important that we get that. And it says in verse three, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Okay, and I think it's interesting. And their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Uh, I think the King James says they'll make merchandise of you. That's yeah. how I'd memorized it years yeah. ago. And they'll exploit you. They'll make merchandise of you. And it's about them making money. I mean, these are prophets in the sense that they're P-R-O-F-I-T-S prophets. Mm-hmm. They're out to make profit. They're, they're out to, you know. And by the way, it's interesting that word that's used there is uh, plastos. When, when it talks about how they will, uh, you know, with false words. The word false is plastos. Guess what word we get from plastos, guys? Mm. Plastic. Okay. Oh, okay. These yeah, are plastic good. preachers with plastic messages, man. They're false. They're and the the Greek word actually means to be to mold, uh, a feign, made up, counterfeit, from plasso, molded, artificial, or fictitious. Interesting. And it's interesting. I've seen it used by an Italian cook, and she talked about those who were using dough without, or I'm sorry, making pies without dough in them were plastos pies because plastos yeah. means fake <laughs> you know i thought that was so funny that's really and i good. thought it was interesting but that's what these guys do they a lot of times they'll use our dictionary i'm sorry they'll use our vocabulary that's what they do they'll use our vocabulary but they'll use a different dictionary they'll use the dictionary mm-hmm. of the apostates so they'll have a dictionary where i mean the words they'll use the word you know prophet but they'll define a prophet differently a prophet of God could give all kinds of false prophets and still be a true prophet of God. No, folks, if someone's making false prophecies, if I mean, I had a couple times in our fellowship the last 30 years, I had to confront false prophets. And they're not here anymore. I said, if you're going to be here, you have to you have to acknowledge you're not a prophet. Never make another prophecy again. And a couple guys I can think of off the top of my head that I confronted, both left. When I gave a 10-page letter at his door, you know? No, I, I think it's really interesting. Can I think about the parable of the sower, which addresses this directly, and Jesus actually explains it in Matthew thirteen twenty two. He said, speaking of one of the one of the seeds that fell on bad soil, he mentions he says, and the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful and that's what we pray is that if you guys hear this and you guys are into these teachers guys do not let the deceitfulness of wealth because that's exactly what it is it's a false promise it is not anything like what jesus truly wants to give you in an abundant life that is completely unto him amen Amen. you've been listening to the good fight radio show brought to you by good fight ministries If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, won't you consider visiting our support page at goodfight.org? Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062, or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.